So fresh off my Unreal Fest tour, I guess you could say. Uh, I thought I'd do a couple more YouTube videos while I'm in the Unreal mood. A lot of cool stuff at Unreal Fest. So I'm going to look today at outputting UMG over SDI. So by default, if you were to add a UMG to your scene the way you're supposed to, um, or the way you do with video games, uh, because of Unreal's rendering pipeline, and I'll be very uh, brief and about it, but essentially Unreal renders your scene with lights and shadows. It then does things like motion blur and things like depth of field, post-process, uh, tone mapping, and then it does UMG. Now the problem is that when you use the media capture system, so this window down here, it takes it after the tone mapping but before UMG. So your UMG never shows up in your output. This could be useful. I've used this in the past to basically give a clean output of Unreal Engine while I have useful information visible to me. However, you may want that useful information on your SDI output. So what we need to do is we need to bring the UMG renderer forward a little bit. Uh, now, the easiest way to do that is using a post-process volume and a widget component, and I'll show you how to do that. So I'm just in Unreal 5.6. It's a blank project. I've just added the Brushify landscape pack. It's free at the moment on the Fab Store or the Fab Marketplace. don't know what you call it. Uh, I've not changed any project settings. Um, I've enabled the Blackmagic plugin because I'm using Blackmagic today. I've also enabled the Media IO and Framework plugins. So this one and this one, these two. I've already made a media profile for my system. I'm just using a Ultra Studio HD Mini today. Now, one thing to note with the Blackmagics is the new, newer versions of desktop video seem to be broken at the moment. So make sure you are on a on 14.2. So I've got 14.2.1 and that works fine. The newer versions will output one frame and then freeze for some reason. I'm not sure why that is, um, but very annoying. So I've got my setup here and if I hit capture, you can see I've got my output just fine here. Nice scene, but I wanna add some stuff. So I'm gonna start by making a simple UMG and then we'll build on it from there. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a, I've already made a UMG folder, but I'm going to make a new user interface asset in here. So widget, I'm just going to call it UMG underscore burn in. And I'm going to go ahead and open it up. I'm going to make a canvas in here so I can start adding things to it. And I'm going to start by just adding a simple uh, image in the bottom right hand corner. So if I search for an image and add it to my canvas, I'm also going to switch it to the bottom right hand corner, reset its position. I'm going to set this to 1 and 1. And I'm going to make its size 200 by 200. Alrighty, now I've added the giraffe logo in here already. So I'm going to add that as my image. And then I'm just going to shuffle it over a little bit further because it's not actually square. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the alpha in the tint here to 0.5. So this represents a very simple UMG and we'll expand on it in a moment. But now I need to add that to my scene. So the easiest way to do that is in the post-process volume. And to add it to the post-process volume, I really need a, the UMG as a render target. And luckily the widget blueprint does exactly that for me. So I'm gonna jump over to blueprints. And I'm gonna make a new blueprint. It's just gonna be an actor. I'm going to call it BP Widget Burn In. I'm going to go ahead and open it up. Now I'm going to search for a widget component just here. Now, if you haven't used these, these are sort of ways to add interactive screens or something to your game in 3D space. I think Dead Space is probably the best game example. It's not built on Unreal, but using these sort of uh, 3D in the environment menu systems. So scroll down a little bit and we'll have a user interface section. I'm just gonna change its widget class to my burn-in. And if we actually zoom out, you can see it now exists in 3D space. I'm also gonna change my draw size to 1920 by 1080 because that's what I'm doing at the moment. And I wanna make sure that you know my widget fills the frame, it's not low res or anything like that. <clears throat> so the great thing about this widget is not only does it let you put things in 3D space, but if I just go to my event graph and drag it out, 
I can just type get render target like that and it returns a render target that I can use in materials or whatever I want. So let's build a material to use this in the post process volume. So in my materials folder, I'm just going to create a new material and call it M underscore post process composite. Um, this one's going to be very simple, uh, similar to the AR one I built for my AR tutorial. Uh, the main difference is I'm going to use a lerp instead of an sort of add composite because I don't really care about bloom or my burn-in or anything like that. I want it to be legible rather than beautiful. So I'm just going to get the uh, post process, no, what is it, scene texture, always forget. So I'm going to get scene texture, I'm going to switch it to post process input zero. And so this is just the scene. I'm also going to get a loop, like so. I'm going to plug it into the B, or the A, sorry. Plug that into the output. Now I need a texture parameter, but obviously the render target doesn't really exist as such yet. So I'm going to use a stand-in texture instead. So I'm going to create a texture sample node and then under the texture, because if I was to compile this, it would complain that this doesn't exist. Uh, yeah, it's missing an input texture. So luckily this 127 gray is a perfect stand-in. So basically I need a stand-in that is set to linear color here, which 127 gray is. So I'm going to plug the RGBA because this is a four float so I need to lerp it with another four float and then I'm going to plug the alpha into that. And you'll know it works if your screen goes completely gray. Because obviously we're going to have the uh, alpha of the UMG to composite instead. Next, or uh, well, last thing, is I'm going to right click my texture sample and I'm going to convert it to a parameter and I'm just going to call it tex, T-E-X. So back in my blueprint, I'm going to start building things on event begin play. Now you can do this with the construction script. However, 90%, I would say 99, 100% of the time, if you're using a UMG, you want some sort of interactivity or dynamic updating, and that will only happen in game mode. So it doesn't make a lot of sense to do it on construction script. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by creating a dynamic material instance to create like so. I'm going to set the uh, parent as the composite material. I'm going to save it as a variable so it doesn't get garbage collected. Post process material. Now, th there needs to be a very minute amount of initialization time for the widget when you first go into uh, begin play. So I need to add a delay here. So if you notice that uh, you know, it's never being set to your UMG and it's always gray, then there's a chance that you may have forgotten a delay or you need to increase the delay here. Um, however, once I do that, then I can simply grab my post-process material and I can set the texture parameter value. And I can set it to the render target in my widget. So I get render target. And plug it in there. Lastly, the parameter name, very simple, is text. All right, so now I have a material, a post-process material, with my UMG applied to it. The last thing I need to do is actually apply that into the world. So I'm also going to add a post-process volume in my blueprint here. Now, important thing is setting it as a high priority. I'm just going to set it as one. That means uh, it will always be on top. Uh, and lastly, make sure unbound, it used to be called infinite extent, now they renamed it to unbound, but make sure that is ticked. That means it affects everything in the level, not just when you're within its area of effect. So now that I got that, I'm just going to make a sequence, just to keep things nice and neat and tidy. I'm going to grab my post process here, and then I'm going to set settings. And then I'm going to use a lot of make nodes. So I'm going to start by making a post process setting. And then I'm going to scroll down to my render features, which is, here we go, render features. So the, that one, I'm going to tick post process materials. Next, I'm going to make 
the weighted blendables. I'm going to make an array. I'm going to make whatever this one is, weighted blendable. And then I'm going to add my post-process material in here, like that. So we're going to basically add this post-process material we made in this area. And I'm going to add that to the post-process volume. And we can test if it works, because I can then go ahead and drag this blueprint out. Now you'll notice it does create the 3D widget um, in the scene. So I recommend just sort of hiding that somewhere. I'm just going to put it underneath. There we go. So now if I hit play, nothing happens. I did something wrong. There. Okay. So the weight here has to be set to 1, not negative 1. But besides that, if I hit play now, I get my XLab logo here. And if I capture, you'll see that it is also there on the video output on my Blackmagic device. So how can we expand this a little bit? Well, the simple thing would be if we had like a timer on it or a clock or a time code, I guess. So if I grab a text, I'm going to put it in here. I'm going to put it in the bottom center. I'm going to set the alignment on that to 0 0.5 and this to like 4. I'm also going to change its font to be 64. Whoa. And I'm going to make it center justified. And then I'm going to place my placeholder text is going to be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So pretty simple stuff. I'm also going to make this a variable. So I'm going to call this time code. Make a variable. And I might change the opacity to match at 0 0.5. Right in my event graph for the UMG, I'm just going to grab the timecode variable. I'm going to set the content, or set text, I should say. And I'm going to do that on event tick. Then I'm going to get the timecode of the engine code. There we go. I'm going to break this. So that gives me hours, minutes, seconds, frames. And if I want to subframes, drop format, all that good stuff. On the text, I'm going to type format text, like so. And then I'm just going to go uh, squiggly brackets x, colon, squiggly brackets y, colon, squiggly bracket. I don't know what the squiggly brackets are actually called. And then w. It's a really handy node. Um, if you're not aware of it, it just lets you basically type almost like a formula with input variables and then saves you having to do like the actual converting from various variable types. But now I have that, I can compile and save. And if I hit play, we should get, oh, it's frozen. So I just ran into a problem that I wasn't really aware of, uh, although it, it'll probably come across it. But basically the widget would tick for a handful of seconds and then stop, right? And then this was, I thought it might be a time code thing, but it wasn't. Um, so, what it is, so what the cause is, is widgets by default won't tick when they're off screen. So if I click on the widget here and type off screen, you can see tick when off screen. I need to keep that enabled, obviously because we dragged our blueprint under the world, so it can't be seen, it was paused for performance reasons. So if we hit go, hey presto, we get a timer down there. Now, uh, I've done quite a few videos on UMG with camera settings and stuff like that. So I will link them in the description. Go check them out if you want things like lens, focus, uh, camera names. You can also just type just generic text in here as well. And you start to build out your own uh, sort of information display. Thank you for watching.